Thank y'all for tuning in once again. Pun intended podcast. I am No Beard Chris. I got my co-host Bishop as usual. We got a very special guest here um, who's very instrumental in the beginning, middle, and ending of any artist's career. We got one of the best booking agents in the goddamn game. None other than BA Booking. What's up, brother? What's up? What's up? What's up? Man, we appreciate you for coming up because I think, I don't think a lot of people really understand how important. Uh, the right relationship with the right booking agent is, and we're going to get into all that today. Definitely. Understand? Definitely. So, VA booking, VA for a reason. You from? I'm from Virginia. What North, part? Norfolk. So, shout out to Norfolk, man. Talk talk to us hey, about I'm from the seven cities, man, where, you know, they say Virginia for lovers, but we say Virginia for hustlers. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? I ain't never heard for it, sure. but that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> our state slogan, Virginia for lovers, but... Virginia for hustlers. <laughs> now, well, as far as we've known you, we've known you to, and you can, you can, you can talk your shit as as, as best you can. You've been one of the biggest booking agents around. I ain't gonna say biggest. I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? I look, try look, to let say me, hum- let me I've say been it. one of the let me most it, consistent. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. But you the biggest though. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. Because sh- when the artists me. fall off, who they come holler? Oh, they call me, and they got to come I get them, and at the end, you know what I'm saying. Kinda in the middle. They forget <laughs> about you in the middle, but I get them their attention in the beginning and the end. You right. feel me? Now, Definitely. booking is one of those niche kind of uh, professions where you see niggas in it, but you have no idea. Like I know how you start playing basketball. I can I can kind of predict that. I don't know how the fuck you start booking. Yeah. Talk to us about how you how do you start getting in the booking game, brother? Man, I kind of stumbled into this thing. Well, I'm gonna say. God threw me in this because it got to, the music, this thing, when you're in the business, it got to be for you. If it's not for you, it's not going to work. And why I'm so successful is because I tell people this thing kind of chose me. I didn't choose to do what I'm doing. I kind of like developed the booking over the years of trying to do parties, trying to manage artists. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people don't know I used to manage Country Kane. Uh, Young L.A. was my artist. Young Ralph was my artist. Uh, Charlie Boy Game with the Beef It Up record was my artist. These were artists that I managed, was on the road with, and handled their day-to-day business. And I developed the booking side of things from me going on the road with all these artists and, you know, meeting different promoters. So that's kind of how it developed. You feel me? So your first show, like the first show you promoted, what was the the most like? What was your? How much did you make the first? My time? first show fifteen hundred, <laughs> and I'm a shout out to uh, Ugly Money Nietzsche. He Straight. was P Nice back then. Right, I this remember was twelve P. Nice. years ago when he was I in remember, Augusta yeah. doing radio for Foxy One Hundred and Five. Yeah. He booked Big mm-hmm. Country Kane at Pure. Him and my guy Stokes. You know what I'm saying? That was my first show that I ever booked. And uh, I think my booking fee was like two hundred dollars or something like that. But um, it got me in the door. And like I tell people, one promoter brings ten promoters. So right. When Nietzsche booked me, uh, he told somebody in uh, Aiken, South Carolina. Then the guy in Aiken told somebody in Columbus, South Carolina. Then the guy and it just spread it till you know what I'm doing now. You feel me? That's hard. Yeah, definitely. That's hard. Yeah. So I think I don't think a lot of folks really understand. Like, well, let me let me speak to the artist for one second, because everything niggas do is homeboy. So you got homeboy security, you got homeboy booking. What they don't realize about the homeboy shit is, if you got homeboy security, if that nigga shoot somebody, he's spending the night in jail. Yeah. If you got professional security. They're going to tell them for what happened. They're going home. It's, exactly. And it's the same with, with booking to a certain extent with insurance and th- shit like that. Tell these folks how important it is to have a real booking agent who is really doing this shit and, and knows the ins and outs. Of I mean, it's very important unless you want to get your money taken. You know what I'm saying? Why my business is so successful, I got a 99.9% rate that the artist is going to show up. You know what I'm saying? It got to be a, a, a cold day in hell for 
if you book through me and the artist don't show up or something that was out of my control you feel me and i kind of go to the extra stream with my booking I go to my shows. Like you got a lot of uh, booking agents. Oh, say that. Say that one more goddamn yeah. time. Yeah, I go. Folks I, don't I, do that. Shit, I go man. to the extra stream. Why I'm so successful is because I go on my shows that I book. So now I'm building a relationship with the artist. The artist is getting to see me out there. You know, moving and grooving, and I'm building a relationship with the promoter. And you know why I started that? Because I booked about 15 shows for the Migos. Back in the day, they were like 3,500. When the Versace first hit, when they had the trapping out the band, though, they were 1,500. Then they went to 3,500 with the Versace when Drake jumped on the wreck. I bought like 15 uh, shows. Never went on one show. Shout now, out to Amigo. Yeah, now when I see them, they don't know who the hell VA booking was. You know what I'm saying? And, and to this day, I regret that. That's why I was like, I'm going to start going on all my shows you feel me because it's like these artists need to see and know i'm the one i was taking little baby to savannah class and just me him and jada when he was getting ten thousand. i was booking gunner taking gunner to the cave on wet uh coverton highway mm -hmm. and lavish bistro 1500 2000 these artists need to know I was with them in the beginning of this shit. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So when when I missed out on that run with the Migos and I wasn't going on the road, I was like, never again. Any any show I book, I'm gonna make sure that I'm there. And it's been, you know, elevating me. You feel me? And then I swear to God, every time I do a show, when I go out of town, I always get three or four more bookings off that one show just by me being in the building. Somebody want to do something over here. Or somebody want to do something over there. You feel me? Now, let's segue to that because I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Talk about, because you, you, you talk about those moments where you were doing it, but you weren't getting the full fruits of it. Yeah. Talk about that moment or those shows or that time period where you realize, yo, I can do this shit for a full living and not have to work a, a regular job another day in my damn life. I don't know the actual defining moment. I do know people don't know. Like four or five years ago, I was a janitor at Ashley Furniture. I've been doing this music shit like 12 years now, but I was living a double life. I'm sweeping and mopping floors in the day and hanging with all the rappers at nighttime. You know what I'm saying? And it was one day I sat in the damn janitorial closet and I was like, God, this is not what I supposed to be doing. You feel me? That was kind of like the defining moment for me when I quit working at the damn furniture store, I just went out on the limb and was like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try and make it. And then I just started seeing my bookings just increasing and increasing after that. You feel me? So, yeah, man. So a lot of people don't know about, like, when you're on the road, it's like sometimes it can get dangerous. Definitely. What's, what's some of the most dangerous moments of just VA booking, being out on the road, shit pop off. Man, I was with little. Take your time, brother. I was with little baby in Jackson, Mississippi. I still got the footage. No matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you the most dangerous show I ever did. It was with Black Youngster and Rollo. <laughs> hey, shout out to Rollo. Hey, free Rollo. You talking about free the show though. when they started beefing with each man, other? Man, listen, man. I had two shows. Uh, it was, it was two weeks apart. I had Rollo in Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I had Youngster at the Palace two weeks later. Shout out to my man, Jermaine. Jermaine he was doing uh, the Palace back then. Right, Old Rollo, National. Yeah, on Old National. Rollo told me um, maybe a week after the show, he was like, VA, man, how you going to bring, you know what I'm saying, woo woo to the city, this and this and this and that. And I'm just a booking agent. You feel me? It's I'm not... A lot of people get it misconstrued. They think I'm the one that control the show. It's the promoter. I'm just the man in the middle. The promoter, you know, contracts me to bring the artist to their venue. You feel me? And I told the promoter not to do the show. I said, hey, look, I spoke to Rollo. It's serious. The beef with him and Black Youngster, Woody Woo. You know what I'm saying? She didn't care. She was like, hey, I spent too much money in radio. I spent too much money in promotion. The show must go on. <laughs> Rollo called me the show Friday. Rollo called me on Wednesday again to tell me, VA, don't do the show. You feel me? I tell the lady again, she don't listen. 
Friday, I get a call from Jermaine about <laughs> five o'clock. <laughs> he said the pilots got there shot up. <laughs> All the windows shot up and this and this. Not saying I'm not, you know, right. uh, saying anybody did anything. I'm just telling you the situation I had. And um, the, all the windows of the club got shot up that day. Probably around like 3, 4 o'clock. So that was the warning shot. You know what I'm saying? So I called the lady like, hey, my investor, hey, the club just got shot up. I don't think we need to do the show. She, I don't give a damn. Money spent. She, you know, she wasn't from Atlanta. She still was going to do the show? She still she did. Spent. She, oh, I thought she that was like, the end of my damn self. Go ahead, like, continue. Money still been spent. Radio been spent. We going to keep the show going. So I said, okay. So that night, Youngster pulled in the parking lot. I was uh, talking at that time. B Mills was managing Youngster at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, they pulled up in six black escalators. i never forget. And they how they had, they were all the same color, so you wouldn't know which one Youngster was in. And I think they had them in the third one because they let me know which one. You know what I'm saying? So I went to the third one and opened the door. By the time I opened the door, you just heard a it was like some machine gun fire from the back of the parking line. They just start spraying all the trucks. I'm seeing youngster security shooting. I'm I didn't grab the promoter daughter. I'm holding her. We under the car, bullets going everywhere. But what was crazy was after the shootout, the police actually caught the gunman in the parking lot. But Youngster had about 30 young niggas with him. They all formed a circle around him, and I was with him. They got the sticks in their hand, and we ran him in the club on stage. I actually and he got still the did footage. the show? We got the sticks in our, they got the sticks in their hand on stage, and he still did the fucking show. Wow. That was the most gangster show I ever did. And I said, never again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was the most dangerous, most gangster show I was ever a part of, man. So what, what happened in St. Louis, man? I just seen, like, Finesse did a show in St. Louis, courtesy of VA Booking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some shit went down. They trying to say he ran off stage. What, Hell, nah. What, what he yeah, salute to my guy, Finesse. He a real nigga. I fuck with him. Humble dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was nothing like that. Um, it was actually some girls in the front of the crowd fighting. And then um, next thing I know, I see two or three guys get involved with it also. And then security come and start fighting the two or three guys that got involved in the girl's beef. And after that finesse security, you know, he can't be around any violence. The man just did five years for the shit, you know, the shooting in uh, Arkansas. So he can't be around anything, you feel me? So his security basically snatched him. He didn't run. I watched him grab, I'm next to him, grab him and yank him off the stage and I had him parked right outside at the exit door. So as soon as he went outside, his truck was right there. And basically we just shot out the exit door. But it wasn't like he ran off the stage or so he did, was scared of anything. Did he um how long was he on stage? Did he get to he connect got to do with three his fans? Songs. Yeah, he three did songs? uh he did the going straight in. I know his whole set going straight in, uh get, get even. even. Um Get me some money. There's one other record, then he ended with back end. So we did going straight in, get even, and we was halfway into get some money, and that's when it happened. So he didn't even get to finish his whole set. So just to disprove any misconception, Finesse two times did not get ran off. Oh the no, stage he did not get ran off. Like, I was so. there. I'm the booking agent. My partner, salute Jamie. He the one that booked the show, Big Jamie at the Beano. He did not get ran off the stage. His security pulled him off the stage. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, yeah, definitely. One of the one of the things um, a few years ago, you were very instrumental in putting together in St. Louis of all places. Uh, one of the first, what would be considered No Limit reunion shows. It was the first show. Yeah. Right. My show the, the, sparked the whole the tour. Whole to, the, and okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get to it. Let's so get to let, it. Me, let me say this. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. The tour, a lot of people don't know, the tour started in um, Denver. And it was, you know, it was at an arena, and, and it wasn't all the way sold out. Mm -hmm. I happened to be at the arena, courtesy of Fiend and, and, um, and Mia X. You know what I'm saying? So I'm at the arena. I get it on camera. I put it on my page. 
it go viral. I'm trying to make sure I'm not tripping. I think you seen the video, right? Yeah, yeah, I seen it. And then what you do when you saw the video? Which, the, the one that, that was from Denver? Yeah, I think you saw the video from Denver and then you showed it to um dude in East St. Louis, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 I showed it to the promoter out there. Yeah. And then that's when it happened? Yeah, that's when we did. Yeah, okay, I thought I was tripping. Yeah, I thought I was tripping. Yeah. yeah. So People top, be thinking ATL Top 20 or Instagram page. They think it, it ain't powerful like that. Oh, nah, nah. <laughs> it's real. It's real in the field. I'm telling you. I'm here to recognize So I, I, I recognize it. So we put in, we merged in two, two worlds because you get the, the, the power of the ATL Top 20 platform, but the foresight of a real booking agent to say, shit, we can make some goddamn money off this. Oh, yeah. So talk, so talk to us about that process because – I'm asking because what you what you subsequently did was put no lemon on the road for three years. Oh yeah, that's and, 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 and counting. Oh yeah. So talk talk to us about that process and and basically reunifying no limit. I want to first say P, you owe me a goddamn check. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I'm gonna I'm put this out there. Hey, too. say what you got to say. Yeah. Hey, say what I P got, said when he yeah, walked I in that room. I got to say this. Yeah, they were sold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P. I fuck with you, P, but from one real nigga to another, I don't like the bullshit you pull, and I hope this shit go viral. Because the show fucking sold out two weeks before, he gave me a certain price. Actually, I did the show with Silk the Shock. I put the whole right. tour That's together. who was booking it. Yeah, Serve mm -hmm. On was my guy. He linked me with Silk. Me and Silk put the whole tour together. He see the motherfucker sold out. He bring me in the room. Hey, little homie. I'm about to go in your pocket. Yeah, I need to go in your pockets, <laughs> little homie. Uh, we charge you this, but it should have been this. I need, I need to go deep in your pockets, little homie. If you can, if you can, if you can Master say, P. How, no, no, I know, we know that. How much more in your pocket? He wanted another fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you see a security guard that night? <laughs> Looking crazy. That yeah. man had on a, a black, I mean, a brown trench coat, and he had a blank stare. Yeah. He did not look at, he was just, you knew what he was about. He that bullshit. Yeah, but man. he was in a good mood that night. Like, yeah. he don't usually take pictures with nobody. Yeah, yeah. He don't, he just in and out. But that night, he he was taking pictures, you know, he was in a good mood. You know, he, he was feeling real good. Yeah, yeah. That, I got footage. Yeah, I fuck with the OG, but, you know, that kind of threw me off, though. I'm like Kodak Black a little bit. You feel me? I thought you fuck with me, OG. <laughs> you What's up, man? You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is it right? But, yeah. I, but the, the, the main thing for artists watching this shit is look at how important this man is right. to culture and you would have never fucking knew if we yeah. didn't talk about it. A lot of people don't know. They think I, some people think I'm a drug dealer, I guess, because all the gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then yeah. Then some yeah. motherfuckers just think I'm just somebody that hang around. And you, a lot of people don't know, you know, and I say this year, I want to get the recognition. That's why I salute Bishop, because like when he gave me that award, it's stuff like that that people don't recognize. What award, what, what award was that? Me go the, ahead, go uh, ahead. It was, uh, what, ATL Top 20 uh, Management of the Year. Yeah. Should have been yeah. booking of yeah. the yeah. year, what? though. But it's all good. It, it, it was matter, something like whatever. that. I got, yeah. a, I got an award, and I was able to bring it home and put it on my wall. Right. So, you know, stuff like that is important because a lot of people don't know. Man, I've been behind a lot of artists that's coming out. I keep a lot of artists booked. I help feed a lot of artists' families. A lot of people don't know, you know, what I've done. So, you know, to get recognition like that. I say this year is the year I'm getting the money now. Now I want the damn recognition, man. You feel me? If an artist is is starting to buzz and they starting to pop, like t walk us through that process of how they get to you where you booking them and, and doing Getting paid what, bookings mm -hmm. or... or well, pay, well, we understand the other side, but yeah. the paid bookings in which... That's what you eat off of. Definitely. Like, like walk us through that process of when an artist is coming through that. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. That. I tell artists, it's really no set formula of how you can come in. I've seen so many artists work a thousand nights, and some artists overnight. Like, look at the Glorilla girl. You know what I'm saying? This girl's like Amaretta that's been putting in work for years. You know what I'm saying? And then she come in, she, she get 30th show Glorilla now. You feel me? So it, it, it's no real formula for artists to get booked. 
I just tell artists, they call me all the time, VA, how can I get paid bookings? And I say, look, how can I get you a paid booking? It, I wanna, I'm going to ask you a question. Is 100 people going to pay 20 or $30 to come and see you? If you can't answer that and say, yeah, that you can get 100 people to pay 20 or $30 to come and see you, then you got some more work to do, right? Cool. And that's and that's how I end it right there. You feel me? Because they, man, how can I get booked? How can I get booked? A lot of my markets, they're trying to book who's hot and who's mm -hmm. gonna, who's people gonna pay to come and see. You know so, what we call artists like that? What sassy rappers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they think yeah. they know everything. Yeah, they do, man. And but you know, but, it, but it's like. How could you be like that when I'm following you yeah. and you never post nothing I, about you doing no shows? You just got outfits, money, <laughs> drugs, guns. Exactly. But where it's are you going to be at? Where are the flyers? Let's yeah. break this down. <laughs> no flyers, performances, no content at all. Nothing. Let's finish. break this down for anybody anybody who aspires to rap and do music for a living. This is we're going to we're going to do a whole thing on sassy rappers anyway. But this is this is one indication that you are a sassy rapper. If you want exposure and to get paid at the same fucking time, you sassy as a motherfucker. Definitely. You sassy. It don't work like that. That's not how that's, that's not, not how business works. Fuck not music. That's not how business works. Exactly. You don't get you don't get paid to get experience. No. That's just that's just, just that's not how the shit work, goddamn. Go Definitely. go ahead, brother. Definitely. It took me shit. I worked with Grand Hustle five, six years before I have seen a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it put okay, me hold in up. positions. What was one of the crazy Grand Hustle stories? Cause I know it, I know you gotta have one. As far as like um, just one of the crazy the studio a show. Um, cause I know when Young LA popped off, it was crazy. Cause that, they didn't think he was gonna get that hot. Hey man, that LA, nigga was hot. I remember um, why I tell artists why I don't like them to bring women on the road. Okay. Yeah, My yeah, guy yeah. Go, LA, go he's so crazy. Uh, we was in uh, Aker, South Carolina with Travis Porter, Young Dro. This was my first arena show. And um, he in the back hitting a little short in the back dressing room. Okay. And uh, he got his girl with him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So somehow or another, she find out what's going on. You feel me? And uh, we had the Grand Hustle van that night because I used to drive the van. With they had like two of those vans. Yeah, we had two, two vans. We had yeah. a bus in the van. I used to drive the bus with T.I., DJ Drama, and Country Kane all over it. And uh, didn't know she had the keys. So she found out what L.A. was doing. You know what I'm saying? Next thing I know, the show over where he all stayed, she halfway to Atlanta. <laughs> In the bus? In, in the, the bus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's back up for a second. <laughs> she halfway to Atlanta in the bus because she was holding on to the keys in her purse while we was on, you know, oh, at man. that time I was road managing young girl late and hype man. She done left the whole entourage. She everybody. done left us, everybody, <laughs> the bus halfway back to Atlanta. So what did LA say? He was sick. <laughs> so how does he, home? how does he explain that to T.I. and Jason Jeter, like, hey. No, I, I, I had this. You way. had to do it. Okay, yeah, oh, I, ooh, please, please, please fucking I mean, tell about I, that I shit. Just, I just told him, hey, you know, L.A. with the bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> His girl that took the keys and we stuck. Thank God I had a couple partners in Augusta. They rode us back home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I, I hate to say it, um, salute to my guy, L.A. That girl was actually his demise with Grand Hustle. A lot of people don't know. The situation, um, I was with L.A. from the, the whole when he fell out with Grand Hustle to when he got the duck on his face mm -hmm. to when Alec Boy and them jumped, them troubling them. I was with L.A. through that whole thing. And and it it all transpired from that girl. You that same girl. That same girl, yeah. that She got him in a situation, and uh, he ended up getting into some stuff. And... Uh, he felt like the label wasn't supporting him, and uh, it just went from there. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, our executive producer, Woe Saucer. He got he got something he wanted to chime in. Come on, Woe. He, he's telling the truth because I actually went to jail with him because of that girl before. Yeah. So. so, oh, whoa, 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 come back, oh, 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 oh. come here, get your so ass back you here. Know, you know, know the, the hold on, whoa, truth. whoa, because we got a, we got a phrase for them around these parts. We call them scumbags. We can't call them the b word. We can't call them none of those. Yeah. Scumbags. You. You under, you know exactly 
Who the fuck he's talking about? Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, we, you, we Oh, come on, come on, tell, talk, <laughs> no, I got t- talk, talk. We was at a tattoo shop, and shit, he was mad, she was mad he was in there with another bitch, so he had a warrant, so she called the bounties on him, mm-hmm. and shit, I was filming the whole time, so they took me to jail with his ass. Shit, he still owe me some bail money, really, because he told me he was going to pay. Hey, free my guy. You know he locked up right yeah, now. Yeah, he locked up right now. I talk For to real? Him. Yeah, he locked up on a probation oh, violation. I think he got like three years or something. He still fucking with that girl? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, nah, I hope not. I mean, you know, he locked Is up, he, man. Hey, ho, ho, did he violate his probation because he was fucking with nah, the girl? Hell oh, nah, hell he was doing some cra- other crazy shit. But uh, salute my guy, L.A., because at the time, I felt like he was the biggest thing on Grand He, he was. He, he was. was. He fucking he was. He the one that started a lot of this skinny jeans. All that. Mohawk. A lot know, of people was mad at L.A. Like A lot I, of the swag shit now, yeah. L.A. was the originator of that when shit. When I started man. working with uh, Future, you know, Future had some grievances because yeah. he felt like J Money in L.A. was running off with his style. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's all history, but yeah. L.A. definitely. He's know. a pioneer. L.A. Yeah. is schooly. It's pioneers, yeah, bro. Too. Yep. Definitely, bro. I mean, I've been around Schooly since he was 15, 16, sneaking him at K- KT. We were sneaking them in the back of clubs. That yeah, was but the, then Young Thug were, came and, and did everybody's style everybody better style. than them. Yeah, I salute. He did Thug everybody's shit. Definitely. That nigga like Shane's that. son. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. jumping and taking souls but around. But Schooly <laughs> started that whole style, though. Yeah. I got to salute my guy Schooly. Thug and all of them kind of got that style from No, Thug from took Schooly. it. You know how they say um, imitation is the best form of flattery. Yeah, but with Thug, that nigga took that shit to another level. He did. He, he took did. it to another level. He so did. it's like you can do what you do, but you got just certain artists. They say the best artists they steal. Yeah, you're right. When it comes to paintings and just different things, so so Thug definitely he took that sound and he took it to another level. Yeah, Thug took it to another level. And sure. we still want to shout out, uh, like I said, Young LA. Yeah, Travis Porter. Oh yeah, yeah. school. Cause Roscoe they were that Dash. Roscoe, that whole Roscoe. Future, that was that, that whole futuristic, futuristic swag, swag movement. sound that that really mm-hmm. catapulted a, a lot of the music that's now. You with the singing, auto tune type of. You know what I'm saying? Future, Lucci, a lot Rich of kids. artists. Rich, Rich kids. Kid. They started that singing. K Count. K Count yeah. came in on that shit. K Count was kind of after them. School. Yeah, a little bit. Schooly. No, was Party the, All Night was 09. Yeah, I was yeah. in college, and we we used to love that motherfucker. I <laughs> yeah. tell you, that guy, that's, that's experience. 12 years ago, yeah. Schooly mm-hmm. was doing that singing shit. You know what I'm saying? That's when right. We had Future and everybody featuring. This was them. like right after the, uh, what, Party Like a Rock Star and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah after that, that whole, the, yeah, that it was whole after wave, that whole wave. Swag surf, yeah, that yeah. whole swag surf wave. How yeah. you feel contributing you kind of contributed to all that. In I contributed a lot to so, the so, swag cause, cause, surf no, wave. Hey, man, because you ain't finna bullshit us. You just sat here and told me, hey, I'm going to be humble. I ain't winning. Nah, bullshit. You are stable in this shit that we call culture in yeah, Atlanta. Definitely. How does it feel like hearing it like that? You contributed to this shit, man. Oh, I know I did. I've been around did, for a while, was man. Was you thinking about it at the time or did that I was just, just doing this shit. You feel me? I'm going to be honest, man. I, I really came out here just on some. I was the, I was just hanging out at the studio just to hang Which out. Which one? Which studio? Honest, Grand Which, Hustle Studio. Mm, right. I used to, um, actually, people don't know how I got in this music, man. Um. I had tried to book a show with the Getaway Boys back in the day. I remember that. You remember <laughs> Lil Marco? Because I'm a G. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, booked yeah. the show. It flopped. I did it at the Pool Palace downtown on um, off Spring Street. Spring Not, Street. Yeah. You got them so, right. Yep. Uh, with Jimmy, who was the club owner back in the day. The show flopped. I, I used all every dollar I had. The show flopped. I got met a guy named Sanchez who was the street leader of Grand Hustle at the time. And he was like, hey, man, how about we do Grand Hustle Fridays every Friday where we call it Grand Hustle Fridays and you give me half the door. I'm like, cool. Man, me not knowing about marketing and promotion <laughs> and copyright, I'd have put T.I., Young Dro, oh. Young Galilee, <laughs> DJ Drummond. I'd have put the whole label on the fly. Grand Hustle Presents. 
everything. I do it for two weeks and it start picking up because people actually thought the it was a card. grand hustle. No, I got a call from Jason G and Clay. Clay, yeah, Clay. So Clay the Carmen. goddamn Clay. Evans Clay and sure. Jason Carmen. At this time, it was when they were doing the hustle and flow on the Mondays at Club Crucial. You right. remember they used mm -hmm. to do the show. And, and then they were doing it at uh, Cream. Yeah, cream but Lounge. Crucial was That's legendary. Where it started. That's, That's where, it started. where it started at. Yeah. Legendary. I didn't see artists I like B.O.B., Waka mm -hmm. Flocka, Young Dro go through there and get they start through crucial. You know yep, what I'm saying? Yep. But um Clay called me, Jason in the background, homeboy, uh, we don't give a fuck who you are. Ain't no nigga from VA. It took us 10 years to build this brand. Clay threatened to beat me up. Then they threatened to sue me, threatened to come and take my, my uh door money, all of that. And he was like, you need to come and meet us right now. So I was scared, bro, and I'm like, fuck it, I ain't got nothing to lose. So I, I'll never forget, I went and met him and Jason G in the parking lot of Crucial on a Monday when they were doing the hustle. That's good, flow. though, because once you did that, it's yeah, like... Yeah, they show, you Yeah, they're going to show you love. Man, they chewed me out. Don't you ever do this. You used the brand. It took us 10 years to build this brand. You using my artist's mm -hmm. logo and pictures and this and that. But Clay was, I always had a little jury and a little swag about myself. And I worked hard. He was like, but I heard you work hard. Because I, I, <laughs> you want to start working for us, you can. And from that day on, I started, they put me in right. the studio. I was making CDs together, posters. It went from me being in the studio, putting posters and CDs right. together, to they moved me to to the studio, I started interning in the studio from the blunt runner to answering the doors. Then the guy Sanchez, who got me in the bullshit, he ended up getting locked up. They made me the leader of the street team. <laughs> so then I became the leader of the street team Man. for a year. Then I started driving the artists on the road Understand. in the bus, and then they gave me my first artist, which was a uh, big country cane. Right. And I was on the road with him, hype man, and then managing him for like a year. But that's how. I I started with this shit and it just kept going. Kept going. But that's how I got in this shit on the flute. Like God, that's why I tell people mm -hmm. I didn't try right. to get into this business. God But what it did, you in this they business. told you to pull up and you did. I did, bro, and it changed my yeah. life, bro. I ain't get paid for five years. I used to use the Grand Hustle van. I, clubs would pay me to just sit the van outside, outside yeah. to make it look big like TI outside. Or I would use it the van to hand out flyers and CDs for other clubs and I would charge money. And that's how I got paid was using the brand. But I never got an actual dollar from the label. But it created what I'm doing now. You feel mm -hmm. me? It gave me the influence in what I'm doing now. You feel me? Now, I want people to really understand, like, when you get in this business, it's, it's certain jobs like engineer, producer, artist, whatever. And then you got those obscure jobs, though, you know, the manager, the booking agents. I want y'all to really hear this man and how many jobs he took un un unknowingly at the time, obviously, but how many jobs he took before he got to where he is now. He was a fucking bus driver. Definitely. He Lock. was a street team member, street team leader. Yeah. Goddamn tour manager, goddamn manager, goddamn janitor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the the one thing to take away from this, this this gentleman, he's successful in, in what the fuck he does is there is no way that you can just say, hey, I want to do this and I'm finna do this. No, it's a pro everybody has a process. It, it, it's Tim, no, talk, talk to him it's about no that. formula. Everybody got their own way how they get in this. People tell me all that, man, how you do what you're doing? Is no formula. I didn't come to Atlanta to do what I was doing. I was in the street selling pounds of weed. I took a robbery for 50 pounds of weed. Niggas don't know. I, a, a, a partner of mine hit me for 50 bags of weed. Tied me up, had me in the house for like two, three hours. After that, I took a break. I was like, God, I need to take a break. It's time for me to stop messing with this street shit. And I came to Atlanta on some on the run shit. Niggas don't know. I would, the police was looking for me. I just took a 50 bag hit. I was tired. I packed my shit up in the middle of the night, took an X pill, and me and my <laughs> chick drove to Atlanta, and I ain't went look back since. I came Hold out on. here on the run So what the shit. X pill You do? remember the it X pill? It just helped me. Hey, nigga, I'm from the This nigga I'm removed the X pill. I don't do it no more, but nigga, I took a one and a half. And that you know what it that you all up? Gotcha. <laughs> Loaded that you haul up, and I never looked back. But 
That that saved my life, bro. I was on the way to destruction if I would have stayed in Virginia. I tell people, me coming to Atlanta, I was crying the whole way here because I'm like, damn, I'm making all this money in the city. I just got hit. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming out here. And I went for two years not knowing how I was going to make a dollar. And um, that's when I tried to do a party. I actually borrowed the money from my dad to do the party with the getaway boys. How much money lost did you owe your dad money. after that? How I much borrowed money? With 5K from my dad. <laughs> I lost man. that shit the first night. <laughs> oh, yeah, oodles hold on, and noodles. Hold on. What did dad say? Hold on. What did dad Every say? Night. Hold on. Talk to me. What did dad this like, I, He was I, sick. Yeah. Hey. When you told him, hey, Pop, Hey, I ain't, I ain't got, I ain't, I ain't the got money. The money is gone. He was <laughs> sick. And the money look, is gone. Let me tell you what's so bad. We signed the, I signed the four week contract with Jimmy, seven hundred dollars a week. So the first night I lost the five grand. That was over. I was done. I ain't want to do it. Now you waiting party. on the seven hundred. Jimmy talking about I owe him <laughs> seven hundred for three more weeks. <laughs> so it went negative. Went from five so, to seven thousand. Was so that's when I ain't had no choice but to keep doing the night. And that's when I met Sanchez, the nigga from Grand Hustle, on the second week. You see what mm. I'm saying? That's when I met him on week two, out handing out flyers. And he was like, man, I see you out here doing your thing. Let's do the Grand Hustle Fridays. And that was my third week. That I did that with him, you know what I'm saying? Shit, the rest history. You feel me? So look, man, we um, we're gonna kind of wrap it up, man, because we want you to come back. You know, we want you to be a reoccurring guest. Definitely. Um, what you working on right now? Like, what artists or just what what you got for the future? Shit, a lot, man. Um, I mean, you know, I'm all over the place, man. I've been doing a lot of shit with Boogie Finesse two time. I got a lot of shit coming up. I can, I got probably. 30, 40 shows coming up right now. I'm just blessed to just keep this thing going. God just been keeping me in the mix, and I'm just trying to, you know, stay somewhere in the middle. You know what I'm saying, man? But um, uh, I, 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 I want to, my ultimate thing is to be like Live Nation. You know what I'm saying? People, right. think, people think when they look at VA booking, they think I'm like a big, Corporation. I have people that DM me every day. Hey man, can I apply for this position? <laughs> that position. I got my application. They just don't know. I'm in my boxes in the house. I'm a one man army with this shit. I'm in my boxes in the house at my desk, cranking out these shows every day, man. So my ultimate thing is to have thirty or forty agents that's booking under me doing what I do, and I can just kind of chill. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm about to be 43 Tuesday. This is my birthday weekend, oh, man. Shit, man. Salute to right. my boy Bishop, oh, man. Right. This is my birthday yeah, sure. weekend. We doing an interview, but, you know, I done did this club shit so long now. Man, I need to just be in the office now. You so what me? would you tell these up-and-coming pr promoters, booking agents, like, you know, when it comes to the game? Because it sounds like you was patient. You got to stay consistent. It right. was a hundred nights that I ain't want to go out, but I went out. You feel me? It was events that I didn't want to go to. Man, it was nights that I didn't even have gas money to get to events. And I would get to the event and pray to God some way i get a couple of dollars just to make it home. You feel me? So those nights, I remember nights, man, where I would sell a TICD in the parking lot just to get gas money. To get back home. But I got to the event. I'm on stage with T.I. holding up posters. And then I'm in the parking lot trying to sell a CD to get gas money to get back home. You got to stay consistent with this shit. I wanted to give up a hundred nights. I wanted to get this shit up. But I thank God that I didn't because shit, I, I make good money with it now. You know what I'm saying? So the, the, the key thing is staying consistent, man. That's all I can say. It's times when you ain't going to want to do it, but you got to do it. You feel me? Oh, you ain't going to want to do it. But you got to do it if you want to be successful. And, and guess what? That's the perfect thing. We're going to end this thing on. Yeah. So thank you. VA Booking. Definitely. You, you got a story. And Definitely. we're going to continue to tell that story. Definitely. So, Thank y'all, man, for having me, for sure. Dude, Bishop, man. I salute you, bro, for Any, sure. Hey, any time for VA booking, for Bishop, for it's goddamn uh, executive <laughs> producer, Wolf Saucer. I'm no big Chris. Thank y'all for tuning in. We out this bitch, man. Thank you.